Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here for another quick tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to resolve the Windows 11 boot error code 0x80xc00000f. So this error would say Windows failed to start, and then it would have a file directory boot bcd followed by error code 0xc00000f. So this should hopefully be a pretty straightforward process, guys. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So a couple different ways on how to go about resolving this problem. So if you're unable to boot into Windows, we're going to just try and launch the troubleshooting utility built into Windows. So do a hard power off three times in a row. So try turning your computer on. And then after the Windows boot screen, go ahead and press the power button on your desktop, laptop, tablet, whatever your device may be and do that three times. So once you've repeated an action three times, it should automatically take you to the automatic repair utility in which we're gonna be heading to in a moment. If you're unable to get into that, if you have the Windows 11 ISO file, which is freely available through Microsoft, probably by the time you're watching this video, it's still a little bit early in Windows 11 development, but they should be making that available. You could just boot your computer from that installation media and then one of the first screens says repair your computer or repair my PC in the bottom left corner. It should say install now, like Windows 11 install now. And then the bottom left corner, it will say repair your computer or repair my PC. And that will take you to the same options we're about to head to. So if you're able to boot into Windows, that's great. You can start right where I am. And you're going to start by just right clicking on the start button shut down or sign out, and then I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and left click on restart. Again, I don't really expect you guys to be starting where I am. I'm just giving you guys an option, three different options basically. If you're able to boot into the desktop, you do what I just did. If you're unable to boot into this recovery utility, then you get the DVD or ISO file and you boot your computer off of it. Or if you're able to just do a hard power off three times in a row, you just would go ahead and access it that way, which is fine. So giving you guys three different ways on how to get to this point. So choose an option. You can select troubleshoot, reset your PC, or see advanced options. Go ahead and left click on that. So a couple different options here. You could go ahead right from this gecko here and reset your computer. So you can go and reset your PC, which will keep your files, but remove apps and settings. So just be careful with this option because even though it sounds like a system restore, it's really going to be removing most of your programs on your computer, so it's going to be kind of a pain to reinstall everything. They do provide a list of an uninstalled applications, so that should kind of give you a head start, but still. And then you also have a factory reset option to remove everything and go back to a clean Windows install. I'm not going to really recommend either of those options at this point in this tutorial, but that gives you a further option if this tutorial is unsuccessful for you and you need to go a little bit further. Because all tutorials of this nature are fairly generic to cover as many different errors and possibilities there are, there's an infinite number of problems that could create this error message. So, you know, we got to cover as many options as we can. So anyway, we're going to go underneath advanced options here. And this is going to be the meat and potatoes of today's video. So there's a lot of options, like I said, on this page. Um, all of them are pretty good. The startup repair option, if you were to go under here, you can go ahead and actually run an automatic utility. It'll start right when you click on it, and it'll actually go and try and fix the problems automatically. So that's a completely automatic tool. You can also try uninstalling updates. will allow you to uninstall recent quality, which is more regular daily updates or feature updates, which are larger updates that occur semi-annually or annually. So more of the big builds like service pack kind of updates, if you want to think of it like that. You can also go underneath startup settings, which will allow you to go to the safe mode or safe mode with networking. You can also boot to a command prompt, I believe also through here, but it's kind of redundant because you have a command prompt option here. You can also select System Restore, a very good option. I would highly recommend you guys take a look at that. And if you have any restore points saved on here, you can just go ahead and select the most recently created one and then restore your computer back. So, I mean, honestly, one of these options I've already presented here should be able to resolve the problem in itself. However, if you're still having an issue, I would recommend heading over to the command prompt here. So go ahead and select that. And we're going to begin. So I'm going to have this up on the screen. Or I'm going to zoom in, I should say, so you guys should be able to see what I'm typing a little bit easier. 
So we're going to start by typing boot rack. So it's very important you guys type exactly what you see on my screen here because if you don't, it's not going to work for you. And you're going to get an error. It's going to say that it's not going to be applicable for your computer. It's going to say that it couldn't find the command, something along those lines. So just be mindful of what you're typing. So anyway, we're going to go start by typing boot, B-O-O-T-R-E-C, so boot rack, space, forward slash fix, MBR, exactly how you see it on my screen here. So again, boot rack, space, forward slash, fix, MBR. Hit enter on your keyboard. Should say the operation completed successfully. Now it's going to get a little more complicated. It's going to be a little bit longer command, so just be ready for it. We're going to type in BCDEDIT, space, forward slash, export, space, then type the drive letter where Windows is installed on. Most of you guys should be the C drive. It may be different depending on your computer. Let's start with the C drive. That's more than likely where it's going to be. So that's where I'm going to select. I know it's the C drive in my case. And then you're going to do a colon. So C colon. And then you're going to do a backslash BCD backup. So I know it's a little daunting, guys, but we're going to walk through that one more time for you. So it's, again, it's B, C, D, E, D, I, T. Then you're going to do a space, forward slash export, E, X, P, O, R, T. Then you're going to do another space. Now you're going to type the drive letter where Windows is installed. If you don't know, it's probably the C drive, but you can type other drive letters. It's probably just going to give you an error if it's not. Other common drive letters could be the D drive, E, F, G, H. Usually it's pretty early in the alphabet, honestly. And the default is typically the C drive, so I just want to put that out there for you guys. So now once you have it exactly how you see it on my screen here, hit enter on your keyboard. If you did everything correctly, it should say the operation completed successfully. If not, check your and retype it. Make sure you type it in correctly. I feel like a lot of people mess up here because they don't type it in exactly how you see it on my screen. You're welcome to pause the video, rewatch parts of the video. You can zoom in. I mean, there's a lot you can do on these video guys. And I think you can even listen to the transcript on the side of the video. I don't know how good um, the translation is, but usually it's pretty good. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next command here. It's going to be A-T-T-R-I-B, space. Now we're going to do the same drive letter we did before, so it's going to be the C drive in my case. And then again, it's going to be a colon. And again, a colon, it's basically one dot on top of another dot. So if you hold down the Shift key and the key right next to the L key on your keyboard. So if you're unfamiliar with where to find the colon key, that's where it is. You can go on Google Images and look that up too. But again, so C colon backslash boot b-o-o-t backslash b-c-d space minus sign h space minus sign r space minus sign s so i know that was a lot but that was again a-t-t-r-i-b space and then type in your drive letter here and then you're going to do a colon backslash boot b-o-o-t backslash bcd space minus h space minus r space minus s so it also might be called the subtraction sign whatever you want to call it it's fine with me go ahead and hit enter on your keyboard now you notice we don't get any message here at all which is fine do not worry about that that means we probably did it correctly so anyway we're going to go ahead and move on to our next command here so it's going to be R-E-N space, same drive letter we did before. So again, it's a C drive in my case. And then a colon, backslash boot, backslash B-C-D, space B-C-D dot O-L-D. So B-C-D dot old, basically. So again, R-E-N space C colon, backslash boot, backslash B-C-D space bcd dot or period old so dot period whatever you want to refer to this character as go ahead and hit enter on your keyboard 
And I promise you guys we're almost done here. So now type in B O O T R E C space forward slash rebuild B C D again all one word so boot rack B O O T R E C space forward slash rebuild B C D all one word no spaces at all on there. Go ahead and hit enter on the keyboard. Should say scanning all disk for Windows installations. Please wait. This may take a little while here. So we can see it has successfully scanned the Windows installations here. It did find one, fortunately, which is good. That's what you want. So you're going to go ahead and tap the Y key on your keyboard, just the letter Y. Hit Enter on your keyboard. Should see the operation completed successfully. At this point, go ahead and close out of here. You can type in exit as well if you prefer. So close out of here. And you go ahead and continue to Windows. So I'm running an earlier version of Windows 11 here. So this is Windows 10 Pro. But it should say the exact same thing for Windows 11. And the process should be identical. I mean, this is a Windows 11 machine here. But um, quite a process here, guys. You know, I hope everybody stuck through it. I felt like I was on it, the journey with everybody there. I could feel the struggle. But we made it through. And we are back into Windows. So pretty straightforward process there, guys. Do hope that I was able to help you out, and I do look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.